So I was hitting it with an argument uh, today, and I thought I'd share it. Um, I've covered it in a couple other videos, and I'll link those in the description below. Um, just to give a little bit more context, um, I go into deeper dive on each individual subject, but I wanted to go over specifically the feminist argument, particularly the intersectional feminist argument, because they love using this, and discuss why it fails so that everybody else can understand why it also fails. And maybe we could have a coherent basic structure and box them in a corner just by using rough ideological logic, um, especially when these people like to think in groups rather than individuals. They ignore the individual aspects of things and they focus on the group aspects of things, which works in their context, sadly, and unfortunately, because it's when they look at it, that's what they're trying to do and it's, and it's kind of funny. Um, but they fail in a couple of reasons, and I'm going to go over those. So first, I wanted to go over the argument itself. And this person that I was talking to actually damn near parroted uh, everyday feminism and their argument. It was really kind of interesting because I, I, they said it, and I was like, I've heard that before. So I went and Googled it, and they literally quoted it almost verbatim what is in everyday feminism. How dare you imitate my secret technique! Oh! And this is what everyday feminism has to say. Equity is giving everyone what they need to be successful. Equality is treating everyone the same. Um, that's funny and hilarious, and it's not true. That's not how things work in reality, um, because down to an individual level, it doesn't work. In, in a group level, maybe, because at, at an average, like I've talked about the law of averages before, and how you cannot take a group think idea and put it to an individual. It's impossible, and it violates the law of averages. The, the average will not ever apply to the individual, and nine times out of ten, you'll be wrong. Um, it's a good guess, but other than that, I mean, it's you're basically stereotyping at that point. There's no, there's no merit... There's no good that can come out of it. Regardless, what they said to me also was a parroting piece. Equality aims to promote fairness, but it can only work if everyone starts from the same place and needs the same help. Not true on an individual level, nor on a group level. But let's skip over that for now, because we're thinking on the group level. And um, if we go on the group level, they, they have a quasi-valid argument. Equity appears unfair, but actively moves everyone closer to success by leveling the playing field. And what they mean by leveling the playing field can only function in one way. So to illustrate this, here's an image. Oh, if you're really so good, don't stand there. Show me what you can do. <laughs> but Master, my knowledge of Kung Fu is so small. <laughs> huh. That's true enough. Well then, time for us to leave. Okay. So in this first image, you, you, we've seen this a lot, especially from feminist things and these dogma talking points. It's really kind of ridiculous. But essentially, the first image is assuming everyone's benefiting the same and they are being treated equally. So they all got the same box, but because they're different, not everyone can see the game. Uh, let's ignore the fact that they all could have bought a goddamn ticket and sat in the bleachers with everyone else. They're just... Ignore that. This is for purposes of their illustration of their argument. The second one is that each of them are given something a little bit different because one person's tall, one person's medium, one person's super small. So if you get the small person the double and the tall guy nothing, um, they all can see. They all benefit. Everything's the same. Um, this is kind of funny. Um, this is where their argument fails. Um, and I'll illustrate why in a second here, which is absolutely amazing that they try to simp uh, simplify it down to an inv individualistic term and then expect it to go to group level. Third image is basically them trying to say there's a systemic barrier. Basically, the, the, the wooden fence is blocking their view, so they put a chain link fence, and now everybody's happy because all it can see, and you don't need to do different changes and measures and whatnot to uh, make it equal outcome. Did I do that? Are you sure? This argument is retorted. It's retarded for a variety of reasons, and they kind of illustrate it in the image itself. Not everybody's the same. Some will require more, some will require less. But if they're all given the opportunity to do something, great, then each one of them can find their own way to achieve what they want, which is to watch the ball game. 
The tall dude probably won't need a box. That's fine. He may actually give it to the little guy. That's fine. That That is not equity. That is equality. The one person may actually grab two boxes because they need more to succeed. That's just the way it is. This does not apply, and nor does it translate over to work, to production, to human capability, or anything of the sort. Um, this also assumes that you must take away from those that are able to achieve much and give it to those that can achieve a little. So when they talk about leveling the playing field, they're literally talking about taking away, taking away from somebody that achieves greatness, that is highly productive, that is extremely smart, and giving all their benefits to the person that is a slacker that doesn't want to work, that doesn't do anything to earn what they have. In uh, uh, AOC's Green New Deal, she talked about giving things to people unwilling to work. That is, that is equity. Basically, those that are willing to work, we give to those that are unwilling to work. Why? Because they're unwilling to work. They're freaking freeloaders. This is giving to freeloaders, essentially. This is why this argument fails. It's not, it's not moral. It's not ethical, it's not beneficial to anyone except for those that are unwilling to lift a goddamn finger to do anything. Instead of lifting those people up, you're now catering to their weakness. This is not a positive move, nor is it something that anyone should do. Uh, unfortunately, that's, that's what people think is, is equitable in, in this day and age. It makes no sense to me whatsoever. So let's go to why their level playing field, this particular argument in particular, makes no goddamn sense. Their plan is clear now. All right, before you, I have something that's really on everybody's mind because they like to distribute this across uh, races and whatnot, and white nationalists, as retarded as they fucking are, thinks that this is an argument for superiority when it isn't because this is just one out of a multitude of faceted um, abilities that will make somebody successful or not. I mean, you don't have to be smart to be successful. Look at all of the professional sports people. Not exceptionally smart. You listen to their interviews. They're not smart at all. But they make a shit ton more than I do. That's for damn sure. Um, they may only be able to work until they're 40, and then after that, they can't keep up with the younger crowd, which is normal. I mean, that's human nature. But by then, they have hundreds of millions of dollars in their pocket. They'll need, never need anything ever again. And from there, if they have some tra uh, trades or skills that they can take past that and, and maybe turn it into something a little bit more, like Michael Jordan, for example... They can market that and continue a business, a franchise, beyond their playing skills. They, they can do that. Depends on the individual, of course. But that's equality, not equity. Because not everybody does it. Some of them just take their money, squander it, and turn into bums at the end, <laughs> near the end. Take R. Kelly, for example. He has next to nothing at this point, and now he's in deep shit. Anyways, here's the IQ distribution. Just, you can pretend... Um, it's any distribution. Let's just say it's everybody. For, for all intents and purposes, it's half a million people were tested in the last one I saw. Um, this is their medium distribution. So to level the playing field, all the people in the upper quotient, the 34, 14, 2, and 1% on the right side, which are going to be the super intelligent people, past 100, to level the playing field for those that can achieve high proficiency within uh, knowledge work, within technical jobs, programming, and whatnot, you will have to restrict them to the lowest common denominator, the person that barely gets it, the person that can't program worth a damn, the guy that wanted to be a programmer because he thought there'd be a lot of money in it, but doesn't understand how to program because he can't do basic logic, maybe. Um, perhaps he just doesn't get math. I mean, there's, there's people out there that just don't, don't get math. That's completely possible, completely fine, too. That just means you're not probably suited to be a programmer. But according to equity, I would have to level the playing field. And to do that, I would have to shift everybody on that one side all the way over to the lowest common denominator, whoever's probably in the lesser of the 34% and maybe the 14%, which means everybody on the one side would have to uh, reduce their production to the lowest common denominator. That would be equity. 
that would be limiting people's abilities, limiting people's output and throughput to make those that look on the other end as if they're productive. They could be actually slackers for all we know. Maybe they don't actually program where the damn. Maybe they don't show up to work on time. Maybe they don't want to work on time. Maybe they show up and they're supposed to do 40 hours a week and they only do 30. Uh, there's, there's a gambit of reasons that may, they may or may not do well in that job. <laughs> That's very interesting. You've done well. You've got the right technique. As you saw in their little picture, it makes it seem like you're being fair to everyone else. And, it, and when they say it seems unfair, it's because it is unfair. Whenever you try to apply it to a distributable group, you have to go to the equal the playing field. What does that mean? Well, the only way to do that is to take your lowest common denominator and reduce everyone else to that standard. That's why you see the feminists pushing for lowering the standards on entrance exams for students to go into colleges because it's too hard for other, some and not a hard enough for others. So they want it equitable. They want it so everybody can make it through this entrance exam. Same thing goes for the military. They tried to do that where they lowered the standards for entrance into the military so that everybody can be in the military. Young fella, you're quite smart. But not smart enough for the likes of me. In sports, for example, they wanted to make it so trans women can fight other women, which really means it's man beating on a woman because they forgot one other thing, and that's kind of the second point to this and the reason why equality works better than equity. Human development spans from conception, sperm meets egg, the point that that happens to 18 to 20, depending on the individual. We have 18 to 20 years of development. No two people, as fun as equity sounds, no two people are going to be the same. Going back to my my mean distribution. In order for them to have everybody is starting out from the same place, which they call equality, which is not true. Um, basically, for equity to occur, everybody would have to have the exact same upbringing for 20 years. That way that the, the people that excel would not have to dumb themselves down to those that don't excel. Because you have to go to leveling the playing field. The only way to make it even for everyone is if everybody that overachieves now achieves less. There's no other way around that. So anybody that's highly proficient in their job now has to dumb it down. I don't know how many times I have to tell you this, but that's what the argument is. Equity is leveling the playing field to them, which means reducing everyone to the lowest common denominator for everyone else. Regardless, equality if you were to apply the same methodology, the same thought process as they're trying to say, where you level the playing field, that would mean that everyone would have to have the exact same upbringing, the exact same parenting, the exact same education, the exact same experiences, the exact same um, ecology growing up, um, the exact same uh, development skills, no difference in biology whatsoever. Um, which they always push the social construct of biology anyway, so they wish that was true, but we know that it's not, and since it's not, they want to argue against it. Um, whole other video for that guy. But essentially, you would have to ignore all of that. All 18 to 20 years of development, all biological differences, all cognitive ability differences, and the IQ score, the, the distribution as it is, would have to be flat. They'd have to make it a T. Everybody has the same intelligence. That way, when you do equal opportunity, equality, everybody would have the equal outcome, regardless of where you came from. That's why they think the only way to get equality is to have, the, have everybody have the same experience. That is not the case. That's how you would achieve equity, because they would level the playing field, which means they'd reduce everybody to just it'd be a T. They would have no distribution. Everybody's the same intelligence. They would have to engineer that to a, to a genetic level. There would be no able-bodied people. There would be no Down syndrome. There would be nothing of that. There would be no birth defects. They'd probably have to kill those off if they were. Um, or find a way to genetically alter it during development so it never happens. Unfortunately, we haven't figured that part out, so nope. Um, eugenics is not a cool thing either, so that's a bad idea. But essentially, that's what would have to happen. 
but through equality, each one of those people that develop in different sk sets, skills, and whatnot, they may have a really crappy life, such as mine, and be able to achieve a lot because of their own abilities. Maybe they have to try a little harder, maybe they have to try a little faster, maybe they have to stand out a little bit more, um, maybe they have to take some take some risks to make things happen, to make things real. But that would be equality of opportunity, meaning that the opportunity, the door is open. You just have to take that opportunity, whether you, whether you can or not. Now, that's, that's true with literally everyone. In fact, that's the way life is in normal circumstances. People take advantage and people take the opportunities that come to them, and either they succeed or they fail. Now, that's that's also dependent upon your cognitive abilities, but that's why equality is a fairer system, because you can achieve whatever the hell is within your ability, so long as you try. But in equity, everyone can achieve the same thing, and that's why they revert to that, uh, to, for equality to work, you need to level, you need, everyone have to start from the same place. That is not the case. For equality to work, Everybody has to say, have the same opportunity, and it's up to the individual. It's now up to um, the, the person that is trying to succeed or fail. There is no group to blame it on, which is another reason why their argument works for them, because they think in groups. They don't think in individuals. So a group would have to be to blame for somebody not being able to achieve what they could achieve. So they must blame someone else. There is no individual accountability within equity. There is individual accountability within equality. Um, that is the main difference, and that is their talking point. I think that's the root, if you want to go to it, of why equality versus equity is such a fighting point between feminism and reality, because we don't develop like ants. We are not bred for purpose. This is the analogy I've used so many times, and it, and it fits. Within an ant colony, every ant is bred for a reason. The queen is replaced every so often by the new queen or queens, whichever one decides to take off. Some of them fly away and start their own colonies. Um, the colony itself perpetuates itself. They have a caste system for all intents and purposes where every ant is bred for purpose. They do not exist outside of that purpose. That's all they do. Okay? We are not like ants. We have different abilities, different skills, different traits, different uh, everything. Uh, there's, there's, there's no two people on this planet that probably think alike 100%. There's going to be differences here and there. There's going to be differences in their experiences, their upbringing, their, their life, their everything. There's six billion people on this world, and we're every bit as unique as the next. Because of this, equity is impossible. We can't level the playing field because that would require either the smartest people dumbing things down, so throw innovation out the goddamn window, or rising the people up that are not as productive as others. Now, that is a harder move to do than having the smartest person do menial work. It's, a, it's more difficult to bring a person up than it is to bring a person down. This is why equity fails again. So... In closing, their, their argument is pretty simple. From a group perspective, to achieve equality must have the same um, development, for lack of a better word. All 18 to 20 years must be the, exactly the same for equality to work, according to them. Equity is more achievable if all groups are treated the same, because these groups, in essence, um, will function better because we'll have the equal outcomes. But in order to do that, they have to level the playing field, as they put it. Equality works in reality because we are all unique individualistic uh, people. We function as such, regardless of what people think. They may align to groups. They may find themselves a part of a group. But that doesn't make, make your identity completely about the group. You do have individualistic um, aspects, people drive for individuality normally, especially when they're trying to stand out for a variety of different pers uh, purposes, and it's evolutionarily sound. No matter what you might like, nothing's going to change that. 
So I hope that made a whole lot of sense. Um, once again, I link, I have a broader description of both equity and equality in two different videos. I'll link them in the description below. Um, I have a couple other things that are going to come out of this, I think. Um, the next thing I'm going to cover is a group that perpetuates such things and why they are a complete disaster. Um, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, thank you for all your new subscribers. Um, I, I've i been trying to get bearing on my channel for a long time, and it looks like it helped me out quite a bit. So I hope I can maintain the same view level that I got out of that thing, because that was, that was pretty damn awesome. Um, regardless, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. The class is finished today. Mm.